Hi everyone, my name is Federico Tartarini and in this video series I just want to show you how you can develop and deploy a Flask application on Google Cloud Run. Google Cloud Run is very nice because you can develop and deploy containerized application in few seconds. An advantage that you, that you have in containerizing application is that each application is going to be one service and then you don't have to worry about dependencies, about upgrading the server or anything like that. Google Cloud Run is fully managed, so it's fully managed by Google, so you don't have to worry about scaling up if you get more user or scaling down. Google will take care of all that. And especially at the beginning, if you don't have a lot of user, you're going to be able to use Google Cloud Run for free. In the first video, I'm going to show you how to deploy and develop a super simple Flask application. So after you will watch all this video, you're going to be able to deploy this application, which is a super simple Flask application with just display a message. And as you can see, we get our URL, so everyone can actually access our simple Flask application. In part two of this video series, we're going to look a little bit more in detail how to develop a full Flask application. And for part two of our video, we're going to deploy this website. In part one and part two of our video, we are going to deploy our application using the online Google Cloud Shell console. So this is very useful because you will not have to install anything on your computer. You can just activate the Cloud Shell here by clicking this button here and I will show you all the steps and you're going to be able to deploy your application via the Cloud Shell. However, in part three, I'm going to show you how to do that locally from your computer using G Cloud. In that case, we will have to install G Cloud on our computer, we will have to authenticate, but then it's going to be much easier to deploy our application. So I hope you will find this video useful. One thing before we start, so if you like this type of video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel because it really helps a lot because my channel is still a new channel. And if you have any question throughout this video series, just leave it under the video and I will try to reply to your question as soon as possible. I will also provide the code that I'm using in this video down in the video description. I hope you will find this video series interesting and let's start. So the first thing that you need to do is to log in into your Google Cloud Platform uh, console. And if you have not done it yet, you need to create a new project. How can you create a new project? You can go here at the top. So when you start, it might look a little bit different. So let me go to the main page here. Let me close the terminal. So this is how it can look like at the beginning. If you have not created any project, you just have to click here at the top and you have to click on create a new project. This is going to ask you a couple of information. So in this case, it's going to ask you for the project name and you can specify whatever you want. So for instance, you could have example YouTube and this is going to be your project ID. So keep in mind that the project ID and the project name could be a little bit different. Then you have to specify organization and location and then you click on create. In my case, I don't want to create a new project because I have already a project created here. So if you go on the left side of the Google console, we can see here in the navigation bar Google Cloud Run. So we can click on Google Cloud Run and this show, shows us our project. Please note that for one project, you may have more than one web application. As you can see here, I've already an application that has been deployed, but I can create a new service, which is a new Flask web application. And these two web applications, they can be inside the same project. So let's do that. Let's create a new service. We're going to create the new service using the Cloud Shell. So in order to open the Cloud Shell, we just have to click here at the top in the navigation bar. This is going to open the Cloud Shell here at the bottom of the screen. And first we are going to create a simple application. So let's just check all the files that are inside here the Cloud Shell. As you can see, there is only a text file. 
So I'm going to create a first a directory where we are going to store our Flask application and then we are going to deploy it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a directory, okay? And we can do that with mkdir and we have to give it a name. So we're going to call it example YouTube. So after we have created the directory, if you use ls, we can see that our directory is now here, example YouTube. So now we see D in our directory. So now we are inside our directory. Of course, if I use the command ls, the directory is empty. The first thing that we need to do is to create a very simple uh, Flask uh, file, a Python file which will contain our Flask application. And we can do that using the command nano and then main.py. This is going to open a text editor and inside this text editor, we are going to copy this very simple code. We are going to import OS, we are going to import Flask, and then we are going to create our application, which is going to have just one root, the home, and then inside here, we are going to return a simple message, which is going to be a low word. Then we just check that we are calling this file with this command, with this if statement, and then we run the application. We are running it in the bug mode, we're using this host and we're checking that this port is available. Don't worry too much about this Flask code because it's a very simple code and I'm sure you, have already, you already know how to create a Flask application. If you don't, just check on other video tutorials or check on Flask documentation, which is very nice and it explains very well how to create a Flask application. We press Ctrl Save and then Ctrl X to exit and now we have this file. Now we need to create another file and we need to create a docker file. We need a docker file because as I mentioned before, all our web applications are going to be compartmentalized. So each will have its own uh, Python version, its own uh, uh, dependencies and so on. So let's create a docker file using the command nano docker file. And then we press enter. Again, we open the text editor and we're going to copy and paste this code. We are importing Python. We're going to import the slim version for this simple example. Then we are going to allow statement to log messages. Don't worry too much about this. You do not have to change this line of code. Also, don't worry too much about this because is, we just have to copy the local code to the container image. So we are just defining the app home as the work directory, and then we are copying the file, the local file inside the container. This is very important because it is the command that pip install, and we are going to install Flask and Gunicore. Please note that um, uh, Google Cloud Run needs Gunicore to work. So you will have to have install Gunicorn even if your Flask application locally does not use it. Okay, so that's very important and that's a, a thing that we are going to have to add to uh, when we're going to deploy a more complex application because we were going to need to install Gunicorn as a dependency. And also the other very important, so here you don't have to change anything in this line here. You can change the number of threads, you can change the number of workers, but this is a simple tutorial, so I'm not going to cover that. What is actually very important here is this last part of the last, the last command, which is main and app. Main is the name of the file, the Python file that we are calling when we want to launch our uh, Python application, and app is the name of our application inside the main file. Okay. So let me show you. So let me save this file, Control X. Let me see like the files that I have inside this repository. So here I have main, and that's why we are calling that main in the docker file, but if I open this nano main.py, this is the name of our Flask application, which is called app. If you change this name, you need to change that also in the docker file, okay? So inside here, you will have to change both of these two values if you um, your application has a different Python file or a different uh, app name. Now we're almost there. We just have to create a docker ignore file and this is just to save some space because we are not going to need all the, all the files. 
So we just have to create a docker ignore file and inside here we are just going to copy all the file that we want to ignore. Again, not super important for this tutorial, but basically as you can see here, you can exclude files that are not really needed for the deployment of your federal application. Then control C, control X, and now we are going to build and deploy. So now that we want to build and deploy, let's move to the editor so we can open here in the terminal. Now, we can see that there is example YouTube because we created that with our uh, terminal. Okay, so if I click inside here, we have Docker file inside, which is basically the, just the same file that we created before and main.py. Now let's deploy locally this application. So we want to check that everything is working. So to run it on the emulator, we just have to click here at the bottom, here in the bottom bar where you say cloud code and then we click on run on cloud emulator. This is going to run the application and we're going to be able to see our application. So we are going to change a couple of things. So the service name, we can call it example YouTube. So we cannot have the underscore, we can just use a dash and then build setting Docker. You don't have to change anything. This is the Docker file that we just created inside example YouTube Docker file. Everything is fine and we are going to run it. As you can see here, we have the output of the terminal. This is just taking a while. I'm going to fast forward this part. We need to authorize the, the Cloud Shell. So if is you see this message, just click on authorize. And also you need to make sure that you have a billing account enabled. If you don't, it's going to fail this command and it's going to tell you that you have to activate a billing account. You also can see if you don't have a billing account because for instance, in this account, I don't have a billing account. And you can see here at the top that Google wants us to uh, activate our account and activate the billing account. They're going to give you a free $300 credit to start with. So you are going to be able to run your application for free for a long time. But I just wanted to let you know that uh, you have to activate the billing account. And the only downside of this is that you have to enter a credit card details. Fantastic. We can see that now uh, our application was deployed locally and everything was fine. We can close this message. If you want to see the web preview of our application, we can just click here on this button here at the top and we can click on preview on port 8080 and we can see our application. Hello world. So fantastic. Now we have our application that is running uh, uh, locally. Uh, now we just want to deploy. So everyone is going to be able to see our application. Of course, uh, if you're going to make any changes uh, here, so hello uh, world, and uh, you can say this uh, is uh, our first application. And then you click here on the side uh, on the bug. You can just rerun our, our application. This is going to launch it again. And then we are going to be able to see the updated version. So it's going to take a little while. Great, our application is online again. And then we can click here on the web preview, preview again on the port. And as you can see, we have changed the text. So the last thing that we need to do is to deploy our service. And this is also quite straightforward. We just have to go back here at the bottom in cloud code here. And then we have to click here on deploy to cloud run. This is going to ask us a couple of information which we are going to have to change or just verify. And then we are going to deploy our application. So we are going to uh, select a GCP project, okay? And we are going to deploy in our project here, the one that I, we have created before. So we are going to create a new service. So what's the service name? Well, the service name is going to be example YouTube and is going to be fully managed 
and by Cloud Run, you can select where you want to deploy. So for instance, I'm going to deploy it here in US Central, but you can select another region, which is probably closer to where you live. And we're going to allow unauthenticated invocations. This is necessary if we want that our application is going to be visible to the public. So it's very important that you enable that. And then we can keep all the other information as they are, and we can click on Deploy. Now, if I move this window a little bit more down, you will see in a, in a few minutes or in a few seconds that our application is going to be deployed and is going to appear here inside our project. So the deployment was successful and this is our URL. So now if we visit this URL, we're going to see our application. And this application is visible to everyone because we have allowed that all users can actually see our application. So let me just refresh this page here. So let me close this uh, actually terminal for a second and then we reload this page here. Great, so this is our example YouTube. So if you click here, we can see all the information, the request count, request latency and so forth. And this is our URL that we can share with everyone so everyone can see our application. If you want to, you can also change the domain name, but this is outside the scope of this video via this uh, um, window here. So you can manage custom domains. If your application is not visible to the public, it's because you haven't enabled here in permission that everyone from outside can actually view this application. So it's important that as you can see here under members, there is all users, okay? So that's very important that you see all users here. If you don't see all users, then your application is not going to be visible to the public and you can only uh, access your application um, via invocation which are authenticated. So you need to add all users to your application. I really hope you found this video useful and interesting and if you did, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. That really helps a lot, especially because I'm a new channel here on YouTube. And if you have any comments or if you like this video, just leave a comment down below under the video and I will try to reply to questions and comments as soon as possible. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.